Well, folks, a new drug has been hitting America's streets, and it's turning people into virtual zombies. Crime remains absolutely out of control in Washington, D.C. I know we were supposed to pretend that crime was going to end after the defund the police movement. Remember, it's going to be kumbaya. I mean, Washington, D.C. actually wrote Black Lives Matter in giant letters on the street. And if that won't solve crime, I frankly don't know what will. They created a George Floyd Square. It was it was it was the moment, the moment that all crime was going to end in Washington, D.C. And then, um, yeah, it turns out Washington, D.C. is a terrible fl- a place filled with uh, crime. According to The Washington Post, a shaken Washington copes with surging violence. This is not normal. Oh, isn't it, though? According to The Washington Post, Stephanie Heishman, a Northwest Washington event planner, knows she may sound almost absurdly cautious as she describes how after a regular Sunday dinner at a friend's house five blocks away, she travels by car instead of walking home. She has her reasons. A year ago, she was awakened by gunfire outside her Adams Morgan apartment building and from her seventh floor window saw a car speeding away. In August, after a night out with her friends, her Uber driver couldn't reach her building because police had blocked off a street where bullets had just killed two men and fatally wounded a third. It's ridiculous, Heishman said. On the other hand, I don't want to randomly get shot. Violent crime has long been part of Washington life, the worst of it during the early 1990s when drug trafficking propelled the annual homicide toll to nearly 500 and D.C. earned an inglorious reputation as America's murder capital. It was actually during this period that Washington, D.C. had to rename its basketball team. You'll recall that Washington, D.C.'s basketball team in the 1980s was called the Washington Bullets. And then they had to rename themselves because oops. And that's when they became the Washington Wizards, as though Gandalf is like walking the streets of Washington, D.C., The volume of carnage these days is not nearly as high. Most D.C. residents are unlikely to ever be a victim of violence, but a sharp rise in crime over the past year, punctuated by reports of homicides, brazen shootings, and carjackings by armed teenagers, is rattling a city already struggling to recover from a pandemic that upended its rhythms and ravaged its once thriving downtown. I I wonder how this happened. Oh, maybe it was that you guys decided that the police were bad. Maybe Maybe that would be it. The spike in felonies, homicides and robberies are up 29 and 67 percent from the same time period last year, according to police stats, is not the only data causing alarm. The number of juvies arrested for carjacking has increased slightly since last year. Forty one of the 64 charged between the ages of 12 and 15. As of August 31st, 81 minors have been shot in the city this year. While a preponderance of violence occurs where it often has in the poor neighborhoods, stats show the geography of crime has become more diffuse with prosperous areas less immune than before. Well, I mean, equity. Equity would suggest this is necessary. Obviously, the richer areas also have to suffer from people being shot on the regular. So uh, that, that, is, uh, that is exciting stuff in Washington, D.C. Keep voting Democrat. It's working out great for you. Same thing happening over in Philadelphia, by the way. There is new video that has emerged from Philadelphia showing addicts on the street in a trance-like state passed out on the sidewalk of the city's multiple homeless encampments. I mean, if this is not horrifying third world crap, I'm not sure what is. This is Kensington areas in Philadelphia. For those who can't see the video, is people literally just lying on the street, just in the middle of broad daylight, like zombied out. Just people, you would think that this was some sort of a horrifying play. It is not. Uh, There's a homeless man who's just standing there on a street corner. I mean, this is just creepy as all living hell. Just people zonked out, obviously. Drug users are seen, according to the Daily Mail, hunched over with no control of their limbs. Others are sprawled across the garbage-covered streets. Large groups have taken over the sidewalks, turning them into homeless encampments where many people live in their own filth. Many of the addicts living on the streets are forced to turn to crime and theft to sustain themselves. One local activist said businesses are using booby traps like sprinkler systems to keep drug addicts away from their storefront. Businesses end up throwing soapy water on the ground so it's wet. And it's not a comfortable place to sit down. There's businesses that set up sprinkler systems as well. Crime data reported by the Philadelphia Inquirer shows Kensington has one of the highest drug rates in the city. We have a great dog. His name is Happy. He's incredibly cute. One of the best things about Happy is that he really allows my kids to just like get rough with him. <laughs> my, my seven-year-old son, he has extra energy. And like jump around with the dog. And the dog's jumping around with him. It's extremely cute. We want to keep Happy living a happy and healthy life, which is why we give him rough greens every morning. The dog food you have been giving your dog is dead food. It doesn't have much nutritional value. Take a look at it. That brown food doesn't exactly scream at nutrition, but green food does, which is why you should try out rough greens. It boosts Happy's food back to life. It can do the same for your dog as well. You don't have to go out and buy new dog food. Just sprinkle rough greens on their food every single day. It contains all the necessary vitamins and minerals your dog is not getting from their regular dog food. Rough greens is the only supplement your dog will ask for by name. Rough greens. Rough. Get. It's a pun. Naturopathic doctor, Dennis Black, founder of Rough Greens. He's so confident this product will improve your dog's health. He's offering my listeners a free Jumpstart trial bag. Head on over to roughgreens.com slash Ben. Let Rough Greens bring your dog's food back to life. That's R-U-F-F, greens.com slash Ben today. Roughgreens.com slash Ben today. Or call 833-MY-DOG-33. That's 833-MY-DOG-33. 
33. Brian is a video editor over here. He is the meme lord over here. He's the guy you see whenever you see our videos on YouTube and they got all the memes that, that is largely Brian who's doing his post editor. But I only know Brian for making me play Minecraft. And I've been waiting for this day. This is the day, Brian. It's time for you to be zip recruited because the reality is making me play Minecraft. Sure, it might be entertaining for some of you. And sure, our audience might like it. But there is very little else on this earth I hate more than being forced to play Minecraft for like an hour and a half because I will not get those hours of my life back. And on my deathbed, I'll think back to those videos of me playing Minecraft on YouTube and say, my God. So Brian, ZipRecruiter is the best way to use AI to help you find people to replace the people you want to replace. ZipRecruiter's AI identifies candidates who are best suited for all kinds of roles. Right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. If you want the most qualified candidates, ZipRecruiter will use its powerful AI to find and send you people whose skills and experience match your job. Then ZipRecruiter lets you easily invite them to apply to encourage them to apply sooner. In fact, over 3.8 million businesses have headed on over to ZipRecruiter for their hiring needs. Get the leading edge on hiring with ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within day one. See for yourself. Head on over to ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash D-A-I-L-Y-W-I-R-E. ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire. Apparently, one of the um, one of the worst drugs on the street right now is, is a drug known as Trank. For those who don't know, that is a potent animal tranquilizer called xylazine. It is a powerful sedative. And uh, people mix it with fentanyl to make that even deadlier and worse. That is something the New York Times has been reporting on for a while. Back in January, there's an entire story about this. See, xylazine causes wounds that erupt with a scaly dead tissue called eschar. Untreated, it can lead to amputation. It induces a blackout stupor for hours, rendering users vulnerable to rape and robbery. When people come to, the high from the fentanyl has long since faded. They immediately crave more. Because xylazine is a sedative and not an opioid, it resists standard opioid overdose reversal treatments. More than 90% of Philadelphia's lab-tested dope samples are now positive for xylazine. It's too late for Philly, said Sean Westfall, outreach worker with Prevention Point Philadelphia, a 30-year-old health services center in Kensington. Philly supply is saturated. If other places around the country have a choice to avoid it, they need to hear our story. A study published in June has detected xylazine in the drug supply in 36 states as well as D.C. In New York City, xylazine has been found in 25% of drug samples, but the saturation is certainly greater. And this is scary, scary stuff. The drug exists in a legal gray zone. It was improved 50 years ago by the FDA as a veterinarian prescribed analgesic. It's not listed as a controlled substance for animals or humans, so it's not subject to strict monitoring. But it started, of course, with um, prescription opioids. When those became harder to come by, people started moving on to Trank. So this is what we've done to large swaths of our population. It's it's all working out great, by the way, guys. All, All this is working out beautifully. Probably a little bit more left-wing policy will fix these cities. Well, maybe maybe if we have some, you know, needle exchanges for the trank, that'll that'll definitely help. Or maybe if we get rid of the cops, because really the problem here is systemic racism. You know, as I said earlier, when I came to the Republican Congress, yelling at bad things in life is not a solution to the bad things. And yet that seems to be the policy that is being followed in these cities. I don't like trank is not a solution to trank. I don't like homeless zombies on the street is not a solution to homeless zombies on the street. You know what's a solution? More law enforcement. You know what's a solution? Mandatory drug drying out. You know what's an actual solution? Involuntary commitment for the mentally ill. These are actual solutions. They require actual funding and they fix the problem. But that might require somebody to actually have the courage to say that in an area where it's not popular. And more than that, it's not about courage by politicians. It's about voters coming to grips with reality. At a certain point, you can't blame the politicians anymore. If we're not cutting our debt, maybe it's because we don't want to cut our debt. You can blame politicians as much as you want. Or you can blame the fact that people have no capacity to think second order when it comes to politics. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda.